الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله الحمد لله خالق الوجود من العدم وجاعل النور من الظلم ومخرج الصبر من الألم فملق التوبة على الندم فنشكره على المصائب كما نشكره على النعم ونصلي على رسوله الأكرم ذي الشرف الأشم والنور الأتم والكتاب المحكم وكمال النبيين والخاتم سيد ولد آدم الذي بشر به عيسى بن مريم ودعا لبعثته إبراهيم عليه السلام حين كان يرفع قواعد بيت الله المحرم فصلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى أتباعه خير الأمم الذين بارك الله بهم كافة الناس العرب منهم والعجم فالحمد لله الذي لم يتخذ ولدا ولم يكن له شريك في الملك ولم يكن له ولي من الذل وكبره تكبيرا والحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا والحمد لله الذي نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدًا عبد الله ورسوله أرسله الله تعالى بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا فصلى الله عليه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وإن شر الأمور محدثاتها وإن كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار قال الله عز وجل في كتابه الكريم بعد أن أقول أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم هل أتى على الإنسان حين من الدهن لم يكن شيئا مذكورا إنا خلقنا الإنسان من نطفة أمشاج نبتليه فجعلناه سميعا بصيرا إنا هديناه السبيل إما شاكرا وإما كفورا اللهم اجعلنا من الشاكرين واللهم اجعلنا من الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر آمين يا رب العالمين It's an honor to be back here at IIUM and in this brief khutbah I would like to share with you a reminder about a surah that I've been thinking about and studying for the last month. This is Surah Al-Insan. And in the beginning of it, there is a powerful question that Allah asks every human being. And in order to get the most out of the speech of Allah, especially when He uses the word Al-Insan, the human being, instead of thinking about humanity at large and the billions of people that live in this world and the people that have lived in the past, every one of us should be thinking about ourselves. I should be thinking about myself to get the most out of the ayah that mentions an insan. So it's a very personal message catered to every single human being, and more particularly because we're fortunate enough to be believers. So as you hear the word human being, I should be thinking about myself and you should be thinking about yourself. <laughs> Was there ever a time that from the endless oceans of time, ad-dahr, the endless oceans of time, was there ever even a simple, small episode of time when human beings used to be something that wasn't even worthy of being talked about, wasn't even worthy of being mentioned, and also wasn't even worthy of being remembered? Allah is asking you and me a very simple question. Was there ever a time when no one remembered you? Was there ever a time when no one talked about you, when even if, if you did exist, people were shy to talk about you. They were uncomfortable to talk about you. And immediately in the next ayah, he says, he created the human being from a fluid, from a drop, nutfa, that is mixed, meaning mixed between the male and the female. 
and Allah is now talking about something, the sperm that is, and the, and the egg that meet each other, the pregnancy of a woman, that is an uncomfortable, embarrassing conversation. So it is not something you talk about casually. It's not something you're comfortable talking about. And in the previous ayah, Allah already said, you used to be something not even worthy of mention and not even something remembered. But there are layers of meaning inside these ayat and I want to unpack some of those layers for myself and all of you. The universe, the physical universe as we know it, physicists tell us it's existed for about 13.9 billion years. This planet has been around for maybe four to five billion years, the formation of this planet. In all of that endless ocean of time, I was not being talked about. I was not mentioned. I didn't exist. And even when this world came into existence, after this endless period of time, when humanity started on this planet, so much human history has passed and no one in that history knew who I was. I was never remembered. I was never mentioned. You can read about history and those people are relevant. The only one not relevant is you. You don't exist for them. They exist for you, you don't exist for them. Using this as a reminder, Allah says, the vast majority of time has passed where you and I were completely irrelevant. We were, com were not part of the story. And this is Allah's way of reminding us that the few moments that we do exist after I come out of my mother. In fact, even when my mother was pregnant in the beginning, she had no idea that I was inside. She's walking around with the baby. She doesn't even know. And then when she notices her body changing, then they both start making dua. If you can just give us a good child. They don't even know who this child is. Even when they remembered my mother was thinking about me when I was still in her belly, she didn't know who I was. She couldn't actually think of me properly. She didn't know if I was a boy or a girl. She didn't know what kind of child I will be, what kind of features I will have. She knew nothing. But then after I even came into this world, even after I came into this world, you'll notice something. Human beings, by their design, one of the words for human, the, the origin of the word insan is actually uns. And uns means love and compassion. Human beings don't just give love, they also want to receive love and they want to receive compassion. So even from childhood, the moment you become a little bit self-aware, you are looking for attention. If your mother is not looking at you, mama, 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 mama. Those of you that have kids know this already. Kids need attention. They're always looking for attention. When they get a little bit older, they draw something they want to show you because they want your attention. They want to be acknowledged. Look at how I'm dressed. Look at what I did. Look at what I can do. The kid can't even jump yet. This is his jump, but he says, look at me. Look at this. Now look again. Because he wants that attention for himself. He wants to be madhkur. The word is madhkur. Someone who is mentioned. Someone who is remembered. This is put inside the nature of a human being. And as you grow older, you want to, when you're a teenager, you want to dress nicely. You want to look good because you want to be seen and noticed. Also, madhkur. You want to be mentioned. You want to be talked about. And as you grow further, now when you're in university, I know there's a convocation happening. There's, it's a big deal to graduate. And what, what happens? People, when they, people get their certificate, you're going to get a lot of uploads on Instagram and on Facebook of pictures of certificates that nobody cares about except you. But you have a need to be madhkur. You have a need to be mentioned. MashaAllah, congratulations, congratulations. We live our life looking for acknowledgement. Even when people get married, the wife is looking for the acknowledgement of the husband. The hus husband is looking for the acknowledgement of the wife. We're looking to make our parents proud. You know, when you graduate, everybody's congratulating you, but you want to be madhkur to your dad. Dad, I graduated. Dad, it's done. Dad, did you see the picture? And you need to get that congratulations from your father or your mother because there's always someone who we want to be remembered by. You know, there are studies now that people are now more isolated and feel more lonely and alone than ever before in history. It's interesting. I was at an Islamic school in, a, in a, another Muslim country and I was talking to a number of boys and girls. There were about 300, 400 boys, 300, 400 girls, 13, 14 years of age. 
And I gave a lecture and the principal and the teachers, everybody was there. So they had a question answer session and nobody asked a question. 800 children in the room, nobody asked a question. And I said, they're not asking a question because the police is watching them. The teachers are there, the principal is there, the cameraman is there. They don't want to get in trouble. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the crowd and talk to these kids with no camera, no microphone. I just want to talk to them. I went inside the girls' section, just talking to these young girls, two hours. They couldn't stop asking their questions. And on the other side, the boys, another two hours. They couldn't stop asking their questions. And the most common question was, what do you do if you feel alone all the time? What do you feel, what do you do if you feel invisible, if nobody sees you? Human beings have such a deep desire to be madhkur that a teenager sees all their other friends online and they're like, I'm, I don't have an online account. I don't, I don't have that many followers. I'm not being seen. I'm not madhkur. I better take another picture. No, I better change the filters. I better do something else. I better change the background or the light wasn't good enough and then post it. Ah, somebody will put a heart emoji. Somebody will put a thumbs up. I'm madhkur. Ah, I can exist now. And if you don't post it, if you don't post your next slice of pizza, if you don't post your, you know, where you're standing, what park you're in, or some wisdom from Abu Jahl or something, if you don't post that, then all of a sudden nobody knows you exist. So you become غير مذكور. For the vast majority of the existence of the universe, and for the vast majority of the existence of humanity, you were غير مذكور. And there's a time that's coming pretty soon where you and I are going to be in the grave. And some people will remember us and they will cry over us and then time will pass and we will be غير مذكور again. We, we remember famous people, right? We remember scholars, for example, in Islamic history. We remember people like Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah or Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah. But they had a big family. Nobody remembers their family. A lot of those people are invisible to us now. We don't remember the rulers. We don't remember the millionaires and the billionaires. We don't remember the good-looking people. We don't remember the popular people, the famous people. We don't remember the art. We don't remember them. They're gone. They became irrelevant again. And Allah is teaching you and me, you're running after this thing to be relevant, to be remembered, to be talked about, to, be, to have users engage with you. This is what you want all the time. But you were created for the most part غير مذكور and you will be غير مذكور again. You're going to go back to that irrelevance again. This is a pretty depressing outlook that nobody's going to remember me. Nobody's going to know. And by the way, people who don't even believe in Allah, they also feel the need to be remembered. So you'll have billionaires that, are, that, that don't believe in anything. They don't believe in any religion. And they're about to die. They're old. They're about to die. And they take their wealth and they donate it to a hospital or they donate it to a charity, but they put a condition, put my name on the building and make a statue of me and put it at the entrance because I, even if I don't exist, my memory needs to exist. I still need to be madhkur even if I don't exist. This is something put deep inside them. But this desire that Allah put inside of a child to get the attention of the child or the desire that Allah put inside human beings that is driving the multi-billion dollar social media industry. If human beings did not want attention, you couldn't have social media. It wouldn't exist. It's not some evil machine. It only feeds on our own desire. We have this desire, which is why it's, it works the way that it works. It feeds off of our own energy. Well, the thing is, why did Allah put this inside me? What's the point of it? Why am I looking for acknowledgement all the time? Why do I feel like something is missing if I didn't get acknowledged? You know, if I feel something, if I feel, if I feel invisible, there's, a, there's an emptiness inside me. And Allah Himself describes this in the latter ayah. He says, إِنَّا We guided him to a journey, a path. We, every human being inside them, Allah put in, programmed inside them that they are in this life on a journey. Now there's one part of that journey, whether you realize it or not, you're on the journey anyway. Every day is passing by, life is a journey, every human being is making a journey towards death. Every one of us, every single day is one day closer to death. 
that journey is happening on autopilot. That's not controlled by me. That's already decided by Allah. But there's another journey, not the journey of my lifespan, but the journey inside of my heart and inside of my mind. There's a journey Allah wants me to make back to Allah. We came from Allah, we belong to Allah, and we want, Allah wants us to make a journey back towards Him in our head, in our mind. But the mind is too preoccupied wanting to be acknowledged by someone else, wanting to be acknowledged by other human beings. And Allah wants that heart and that mind to first be busy looking for the acknowledgement of Allah. Is my Rabb pleased with me? Is my Rabb looking at this good deed and is he happy with this deed? Is my Rabb happy with this service? Am I living my life in a way that eventually when this life journey ends, I'm going to get to meet him? He says, إِمَّا شَاكِرًا Allah made the human being with an ability to go on this journey. And he has two choices. You and I, every one of us has two choices. Either we're grateful or we're extremely ungrateful. إِمَّا شَاكِرًا وَإِمَّا كَفُورًا So let's think about gratitude in simple language for a little bit. If I gave my son a bicycle, and he says, thank you. Thank you, Dad. Thank you, Abba. I gave him a bicycle. But he never rides it. And he threw it on the side. And there's clothes on top of it. That thank you means nothing. Why? If he was riding the bike every day, if he was cleaning it up, if he was taking care of it, I would say this son is grateful for the bike. If he's never using it, and he's just tasked, it doesn't matter how much he says thank you for the bike, the fact that it's collecting garbage and dust, that means his words are empty. That's actually not gratitude. Simple enough. When Allah gave me guidance, Allah gave me a purpose in this life, and Allah says, will you be grateful for that guidance or not? Are you, am I going to be grateful for that guidance or not? That means if I'm not using what Allah gave me, if I'm not putting it to use, then I can say, Alhamdulillah, all I want, it's meaningless. I'm actually not using the gift. I'm actually not using it at all. This is imma shakiran wa imma kafura. There's something really beautiful that I want to move over to in the few minutes that I have left. You know, in this same surah, Surah Al-Insan, later on, at the very end, Allah describes, or towards the end, Allah describes people who make it into Jannah. Allahumma adkhilna fi jannatik. May Allah enter all, of us, enter all of us into His Jannah. When we make it into Allah's Jannah, eventually there's a point where Allah describes that His believers are being dressed up especially. Hullu asawira min fiddha. You know, He's saying, you know, عَالِيَهُمْ ثِيَابُ سُنْدُسٍ خُضْرُ وَإِسْتَبْرَقُ وَحُلُّ أَسَاوِرَ مِنْ فِضَّةٍ They're getting dressed with different kinds of silk. Their special bracelets are being put on them. You could think of it like a Rolex watch or something, or a brand watch is being put on them. Bracelets are being put on them. Nice suits are being put on them. Why are they getting dressed up? You get dressed up because there's a special occasion. Right? You get dressed up because you're going to meet somebody special. And the very next part of the ayah, Allah says, وَسَقَاهُمْ رَبُّهُمْ شَرَابًا طَهُورًا And their Rabb, Allah, will give them a pure drink to drink. You're going to meet with Allah Himself. You're getting dressed in Jannah to have a meeting with Allah Himself. Now, when you have that meeting with Allah, and may Allah grant every one of us that meeting with Him, when we have that meeting, He's giving us a drink. Allah is giving us the drink. And while he's giving us the drink, he's talking to us. And what is he saying? He says, إِنَّ هَذَا كَانَ لَكُمْ جَزَاءً وَكَانَ سَعْيُكُمْ مَشْكُورًا This is your pay. This is your reward. And your effort was appreciated. Your effort was acknowledged. Meaning, human beings were created, not remembered. Human beings will die and people may or may not remember them. But Allah says, longer than the age of the universe and longer than the existence of a samawat wal ard, Allah will remember my efforts. Allah will acknowledge them. And Allah will say, you did good effort and you're getting rewarded now. Allah acknowledges me. I become madhkur in the Allah. I am remembered by Allah Himself. There's one thing to do, dhikr of Allah. This is an ayah where Allah is doing dhikr of you. He's mentioning you. He's remembering your effort. He's acknowledging your effort. So now I learned something about my need 
for validation, my need to be acknowledged, my need to be seen. Allah put that need inside us and no human being can ever, ever fulfill that need. When you want somebody else's attention or somebody else's acknowledgement, you will always be disappointed. And then you, dis you, you realize if you're truly grateful, if you're truly grateful, then you're looking for Allah's acknowledgement and that's it. That's enough for you. And when that's enough, in Jannah, Allah says, here's, your, here's the acknowledgement. This is the same surah, by the way, that when, when we do good for others, يُطْعِمُونَ الطَّعَامِ they, they feed food to others. Allah says, إِنَّمَا نُطْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ لَا نُرِيدُ مِنْكُمْ جَزَاءً وَلَا شُكُورًا Even when you do good for others, you're not looking for appreciation. You're not looking for thank you. You're not looking to be mentioned by them. You even say that to yourself and you say it to them. That's not what I want. I just want to be able to face Allah. I just want Allah to see, see what I did. I want this to be good enough for Allah. That's all. And this is something Allah has given us in the very beginning, in the heart of this beautiful surah. Through the question of being remembered. Us becoming those who are grateful to Allah, living a life that's grateful to Allah, will one day become Allah acknowledging us. In that small surah, that's the journey that's happening. And what's even more beautiful about this surah is in the very beginning of this surah, you see that Allah mentions that we were inside of our mother. Right? We're just we're inside the belly of the mother. And the belly of the mother is called the Raham, the womb, the Raham. And at the end of this surah, Allah says, Yudhilu Mayashau fi Rahmati. So he Ashara ila Raham fil Vidaya. He alluded to the Raham in the beginning. And at the end he says, Whoever he wants, he enters into his rahmah, meaning his jannah. The same way every one of your needs was taken care of inside of the raham of the mother, that was the first, you know, first episode of raham, and the final episode of raham is waiting for you and me, and that's the rahmah of Allah actually, and that's the entrance into jannah. May Allah grant all of us His jannah. You know, as you are, many of you are graduating or graduated, you leave many memories, wonderful memories of friends, learning, experiences in this university, in this place. This a place like this becomes like a home. And you, it becomes a part of you. And some years will go by and you'll have a job and get married and be busy and other things. And one day you decide to come and visit back. Right? To just, just for memory's sake. You come back to visit the university. And you'll see the, the walls are the same. Right? The restaurant is the same. The place you used to hang out with your friends is the same. The place you used to make your wudu is the same. But all the faces are different. Nobody remembers you. This is all amazing, but not for you. It's for somebody else. It's you've been replaced completely. You're no longer madhkur. Even in this, this notion of moving forward with our lives, we leave things behind in which we no longer get. A teacher might barely remember you. They'll look at you like, you were in my class, right? They're like, I thought I was your favorite. No, no, I have many favorites. You're not that favorite. <laughs> I barely remember your name. Abdul Karim? No, no, it's Zubair. Oh, yeah, yeah, I said Zubair. Oh, you're not, you're not going to be remembered. And so, I and you have to make a decision. As you're leaving the school, as you're graduating, you're thinking about a job, you're thinking about a career, you're thinking about the next chapter of your life. Every one of those chapters has to have one title. How will Allah remember this? How will Allah remember this? I know when you're getting a job, what will my mother say? What will my father say? What are people going to say? How much am I getting paid? Where did I get the apartment? Am I, I going to get this? Am I going to get that? Who's, you, know, you have all these questions about prestige and acknowledgement and being madhkur in society. First, if you can just put on top, how will Allah remember this? What impact am I leaving behind? And am I leaving behind something that can continue to make me be remembered by Allah Azza wa Jal? If I'm doing that, then I have succeeded. You know... I leave you with this because you, you know, we, we are now so addicted to the idea that if people don't see your success, then you're not successful. If people don't see your success, you're not successful. Okay? So somebody might call me and say, hey, you're pretty successful. How did you become successful? And I ask the question, how do you think I became successful? What's my success? Oh, you have so many followers. You have so many million viewers. That's why you're successful. And I say, subhanAllah, how far from the Qur'an we have come. How far from it we have come. You know, Nuh alayhi salam had almost no followers. He had no followers. And he didn't have any followers for a really long time. In fact, if you ask most people about Nuh alayhi salam, 
in his own village, people would make fun of him. Oh, that old man? This is crazy. I, this, is what he, this is what he experienced for centuries. And the only one who remembers that struggle, no historian wrote down that struggle. No documentation exists. Some people wrote down about the story of Nuh salam so he could be remembered. No, no, no. Allah recorded it. And Allah made him mathkur. When Ibrahim salam was in the desert by himself making dua that Allah make this house a peaceful place and put the love in, in people's hearts towards this, this house, فَجْعَلْ أَفْئِدَةً مِنَ النَّاسِ إِلَيْهِمْ There was no video camera. There was no live streaming. There was nothing happening. There was nobody there. It was just a man in the desert. This is just him and his God talking. He's not a king. He's not a wealthy man. He's not, he doesn't have scribes that can write down this history. You know, in the Egyptian palaces, you find records of the kings and their decrees and writing on the walls. We don't even know who they were. We just remember some, they paid some people to write on the walls. Nobody's writing anything down for Ibrahim alayhi salam. And yet today, we, here we are doing dhikr of Ibrahim alayhi salam every hajj season. We remember his legacy. And we call our entire religion Millata Abikum Ibrahim. What am I trying to get at? Yes, human beings were made غير مذكور. We were made not remembered for most of history. Yes, we have very little time in this world. And in that time, after that time, we might become غير مذكور. You might even become غير مذكور at IIUM next year. <laughs> that might happen to you. So that's the reality of my life and your life. In fact, even if you do a lot of good for someone, a year later they'll forget. They'll say, what did you ever do for me? They don't remember, you're not remembered. The only one uh, with whom you will be forever madhkur is going to be Allah Azza wa Jal. And the opposite of remembrance is forgetfulness. So Allah says, الْيَوْمَ نَنْسَاكُمْ كَمَا نَسِيتُمْ لِقَاءَ يَوْمِكُمْ هَذَا To some people he says, today we are forgetting you like you forgot this day. We have a choice. We want to be the people that are forgotten by Allah and remembered by people. Or we want to be the people that are remembered by Allah no matter what people think. May Allah make us those that are truly remembered by Allah Azza wa Jal and given that drink on Judgment Day. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim wa nafa'at wa iyaakum bil ayat wa dhikr al-Hakim.